this great and ancient city of Jerusalem, it has always been an inspiration to me. It is so because this place bears the imprint of the Son of God. 2,000 years ago, the Savior of mankind was born in Bethlehem, a short distance to the south. He was brought here to the temple when he was an infant. Here, Mary and Joseph heard the wonderful prophecies spoken by Simeon and Anna about this tiny babe who was destined to become the savior of the world. He spent his boyhood in Nazareth of Galilee to the north of us. When 12 years of age, he was brought back here to Jerusalem. Here he was found by his mother conversing with the doctors in the temple, and they were hearing him and asking him questions. It was near here that he gazed out over this city and said with sorrow, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, and ye would not. Jerusalem was the scene of the final days of the mortal life of the Son of God. Here he suffered the agony of Gethsemane, his arrest, his trials, his condemnation, the unspeakable pain of his death on the cross, his burial in Joseph's tomb, and the triumphant coming forth in the resurrection. None can fully comprehend the splendor of his life, the majesty of his death, the universality of his gift to mankind. We declare with the centurion who said at his death, truly this man was the Son of God. God be thanked for the gift of his Son, the Redeemer of the world, the Savior of mankind, the Prince of life and peace, the Holy One. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. God is our Father. He placed us here on earth as a part of his plan. He wants us to return and live with him again. He knew that we would be subject to sin and death. So he provided a way for us to overcome these obstacles. Jesus Christ opens the way for us to return to our Father. Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. This man speaks blasphemies. <laughs> Who can forgive sin but God alone? Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. Father. Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. I'll be willing. We can find forgiveness as we show our faith in him, repent, and follow his commandments. Through his grace, we can be cleansed of all our sins. Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Yet I know, even now, that whatsoever thou shalt ask of God, God will give it thee. Lazarus, come forth. Loose him, 
let him go. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus died on the cross. On the third day, his spirit was reunited with his glorious, immortal body. Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. Because he overcame physical death, all of us will be resurrected as well. Resurrection is a gift from Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. By overcoming death and sin, Jesus offers us salvation, which is the greatest gift of all. The Bible is a record which testifies of Jesus Christ. It foretells his coming and bears witness of his saving role as our Redeemer. The Old Testament is an account of God's dealings with his people before the birth of Christ. It was written by prophets and contains commandments as well as prophecies about the coming of the Savior. The New Testament is an account of the ministry and teachings of Jesus in the Holy Land. We read of his birth, his miracles, his doctrine, his death and resurrection. There is also another testament of Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon. It is a record spanning the thousand year history of a people who lived on the American continent prophets among them foretold the coming of Christ. They described his visit among these people following his death and resurrection. <laughs> 